Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at a 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate from Okmo Tech. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we got. All right, right on top we have our product we have our product manual and an uh, and like a service card. We have we also have two sets of uh, post bolts. One is uh, shorter and one is longer it looks like. And then we have the battery. All right, when you first get it, it does come with this piece of plastic on top and two terminal covers. This is a group 31 size battery. So it's gonna be 12.9 uh, inches across. Uh, it will also be nine point, a little over nine inches tall and uh, 6.77 inches deep. Now, the funny part about it is in the manual, it actually says that it's uh, 6.77 inches tall and nine inches deep. So those are actually switched in the manual. All right, also the battery comes with this uh, nylon strap that can be easily taken off, just like that. And the rest of the battery is just in a black case. You'll see on the front that it does say Okmo, 12.8-volt, uh, 100-amp-hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Uh, it shows some symbols down here. Uh, it also says low temperature charging protection, so we'll be testing that in a little bit. And then it also has the website right here. The uh, terminals are uh, color-coded, and they are coded in epoxy, so they are nice and uh, nice and tight. Okay, when it comes to the parameters of this battery, uh, this is a 100-amp-hour battery, so the... Uh, so the energy inside will be 1,280 watt hours. It does say that it can do a 100 uh, amp continuous discharge, but the manual doesn't say anything about a uh, high amperage disconnect. So we'll be testing that in a little bit as well. And also it says that the uh, low voltage disconnect is 8.8 .8 volts. Uh, that for me is personally is the lowest I've seen for a low voltage disconnect. So we have a little bit to find out about this battery, which is kind of exciting to me. Anyway, what you should do when you first get your battery is check the voltage at the terminals to make sure that it was shipped to you properly. I always say, you know, your, your battery should be around 13.1 volts to 13.2 volts. So let's go and check it out. All right, and the voltage is, 12.76 uh so that that's pretty low actually that is uh i mean that's probably like in the 20 percentile range of uh of this battery 12.7 that's i mean that's really low actually that's that's really low so uh this is going to take a while to charge um and then we'll you know and then we're going to do a discharge test and in that discharge test, we'll really be able to see where 12.76 volts is in our chart. So let's go ahead and charge this up all the way and then do a discharge test. All right, well, here are the results of the Okmo battery. Now, I know that when I first tested the voltage of the battery, I, I was expecting it to be like 13.1 to 13.2 volts. And it was like, what, 12.6 or 12.7? I mean, look how this battery starts. At the very first 1% of discharge, the battery's already at 12.68 volts, which I was expecting like 12.8, 12.9. So it starts off low. And at the 95th percentile, I mean, this battery is, well, it's below 12 volts. It's at 11.944. So, this whole curve, even though the curve looks really good, I mean, it's a nice flat curve when it comes to lithium iron phosphate. Um, it's just low. Uh, I was expecting this to be at the very beginning at 12.9 and at the 95th percentile, you know, be at like 12.3, something like that. So it's about 0.4 volts lower in general than what I expected. But if we look at the capacity, the capacity is still 103.23 amp hours. So it passed the capacity test. And it also does make sense now that when we looked at the manual and it said that the, uh, 
that the battery will shut off at a voltage discharge of 8.8 .8 volts, which again, that's low as well. But apparently this company knows that the voltage is going to be lower in general. I can't market against it because the company knows that it's going to be low and the tests all show that the voltage in general is just a little bit lower than your typical 100 amp hour 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. So we're going to go ahead and go on to our high amperage testing. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and put the Okmo uh, lithium iron phosphate battery to the high amperage test. So let me show you what we're going to be powering today. Just want to show you, here's the Okmo battery. Uh, along with uh, the voltage of the battery, which is 13.34, and the amperage clamp right here, which is going to monitor the amount of amperage coming out of the battery. We have it connected to a 5,000 watt MX Moon Free Pure Sine Wave Inverter, and currently it's using uh, one amp to power this thing, so about, about 13, 13 watts. We have a 200 watt heater. We have a, uh, I want to say it's either a 1,000 or a 1,200 watt heat gun. We have a griddler, which is 1,100 watts. And we have this Elite Gourmet hot plate, which is another 1,000 watts. So overall, we're going to be able to pull over 300 amps easily through this battery. But we're first going to start with just 100 amps, and we're going to run it for five minutes just to make sure there's no issues. So let's begin. All right, let's just start with the heat gun. Okay, the heat gun is on high. The timer is set. You can see that our voltage has actually dropped down to 12.14. That is a, that's crazy. That's a, that's a big drop from 13.3. And we are pulling 112 amps right now. So I'll come back in five minutes just to make sure everything's fine. All right, well, it's been five minutes and this has not had any issues whatsoever. Um, it's still pulling 112 amps. The voltage is 12.17. So we're gonna go ahead and introduce another 1,000 watts, and that should bump it up to about 200 amps of draw. So we'll see what happens. All right, I just turned on the hot plate. We are now pulling 218 amps. The voltage is down to 11.45. We'll go ahead and let this run for like a minute to see what happens. All right, well, it is now six minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, we're still pulling 217 amps. The voltage is 11.46. Let's go ahead and bump up another 1100 watts to see what happens when this battery reaches 330 amps. Here we go. Our inverter does not like that because the voltage is now down to 10.8. We are pulling 306 amps while well, it's going down. Well, staying actually around 305 amps. And uh, this battery is still not really caring too much. It's not shutting off. Um, I don't believe this battery has any kind of high amperage protection whatsoever. So I'm interested to see, well, let's go ahead and just kick this on too. Another 200 watts. Voltage is getting down to 10.74 amps or 315. Yeah, this battery doesn't have any kind of high amperage protection that I can see. All right, well, uh, yeah, this battery does not have any kind of high amperage protection. So keep that in mind if you're looking into this battery. But this battery does say that it, uh, it has low temperature charging protection. So we're gonna test that now. I'm gonna put it in my h Chlory car refrigerator and I'm gonna drop the temperature down to 28 degrees, just a little bit below freezing. I'm gonna leave it in there for 24 hours and then we'll give it a shot. All right, well this Okomo 12 volt battery has been in my H calorie freezer for over 24 hours. And I had that freezer set at 28 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's like negative one or negative two degrees Celsius. So it should be right on that line of being frozen. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put a charger on it. We're gonna use this uh, LaTime charger. And right now you can see that it's uh, flashing green. That means that it's on standby. 
When I hook up the negative terminal to the battery, it will go ahead and do a solid red, meaning that it's charging. And if this has low temperature charging protection, it should only charge for about a second or two, and then the, and then the charger will turn off thinking that the battery is full. So let's go ahead and try it out. There we go. Ah. And it's charging for too long. That's a bummer. So, what I really wanna know is what do they have this battery set at? So I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in that freezer and I'm gonna lower it down to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'll wait another 24 hours and then we'll try again. All right, well, this battery's been sitting in a freezer that was at 20 degrees Fahrenheit for the last 24 hours. So let's go ahead and try it again to see if it charges. All right, watch the green light, here we go. Nope. That should have shut off within one to two seconds. So, uh, unfortunately, uh, this Okomo battery, I cannot recommend it. Uh, it passed capacity, which is good, but that's really the only thing in my tests that it has passed. Uh, you know, it does pull 100 amps continuous, which is fine, but it also, doesn't stop. You can pull 200 amps, 300 amps, who knows how far it goes up. And then also they really have, they have low temperature charge and protection right here, but at what temperature? Because I tried 28 degrees Fahrenheit and it stayed charging. And then I, I tried 20 degrees Fahrenheit and again, it charged without issue where it should have shut off within a second or two. So unfortunately, uh, this is a, this is a no go for me. So if you have any questions about the Okmo 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery, please go ahead and leave them in the comments. I'll have a link to this item in my description. I mean, just in case you want to look further into it. Thank you so much for watching this video and have a great day. Bye-bye.